What's up guys, it's me Nick again and today we will be doing this. We will be using Houdini and Octane and I will show you how we can detect particles using Pyro, use collisions, emitters and all that stuff. So let's go! So let's start our tutorial and create some cool particle detection. Let's start by creating a new geonode and let's name it emitter. So here let's place a circle, let's make it a polygon and uh, let's just move it out to like minus two and let's drop another one and move it there. Now let's merge them so we have two circles side by side. Those will be our emitters. So um, let me, yeah, briefly explain you what we will be doing here. So we will set two emitters and set a torus at the collision object. And basically we will be filling the torus with the pyro smoke and advecting the particles based on the density of the of the smoke and we will be filling the the stores like one half of this torus will be filled by these two emitters um, we will cover emitting uh, pyro effects and also collisions um, so I, I was just thinking that it's it's the best way how i can like show you multiple uh, approaches and in your projects you can just maybe you don't need the collisions or you are you can tweak your emitters and all that stuff so yeah this this tutorial is kind of packed <laughs> with um, different techniques so yeah let's continue uh, now we need to drop uh, no actually we don't need anything we just we just need this and uh, we go back and select the emitter here let's select pyro effects and hit on billowy smoke so this technique with the billowy smoke is pretty common i'm not a like the first uh, motion designer who is using it but yeah, I'm, I'm just using it because it's very convenient. So, you will see that we have emitter, pyro import and pyro sim. We will get to them a bit later, but let's uh, create our uh, collision geometry. So, let's drop another geo. Uh, let me just switch these off. And here, select this. Select the merge node so we clearly see where our circles are. Let's rename our new geo to collision. Let's hop into it and uh, and add a torus, also known as dot. So let's switch to the top view. Maybe. Let's use the wireframe and let's scale our torus so our emitters are inside. So what we need to do is to make it a little bit bigger and thicker. So now if we look at it, oh, too big. Yeah, like this. So they are inside actually yeah cool all right now in our collision we need to create vdb from polygons because that's um, the collision data will be taken from this volume and let's drop a null.
and let's name it out collision cool now we have our collision data so let's go to the emitter yep looking good cool okay now let's go into our pyrosim so actually we can turn this off in the pyrosim let's first of all check what's going on so we see that our meters are working but somehow the smoke going upwards and we don't have any collision data here so let's start with uh, importing collision data. We need static object. And in the static object, let's go to the collisions. And uh, we need to select mode to volume sample and uh, division method by size. And proxy volume, here we need to select our null from our collision geo. So, out collision. Also, we need to select invert sign. And basically, this, this means that our shape is hollow and uh, the collision should be like from the inside of this, uh, of this form or shape. So, let's just check. Oh, we haven't connected. So what about now? Okay, something is going on. Yeah, it's it's filling our torus actually. So yeah. All right. Now let's shape our smoke. Actually, you can skip the part when I will be setting. Uh, this buoyancy direction because now it says it's X Y and Z and it says one for the Y axis so the smoke is going upwards but if we let's say uh, make it all zeros the smoke will just expand and like fill up our torus it's kind of cool effect to um, yeah and maybe let's let's stick to the filling only one one part of this torus. Okay, so if you will follow me with the, the exact like workflow like I am doing right now, um, we need to set the buoyancy or buoyancy or I don't know uh, direction to be one uh, for the z axis and buoyancy it should be like 10 because we we want this oh sorry minus one actually yeah that was good maybe like eight should be good. Yeah, I think we are good. So let, now let's shape our uh, smoke just a little bit. So switch to your shape tab in a um, pyrosolver and let's make dissipation like 0.1 disturbance also maybe 0.1 and let's bring turbulence 0.8 and also here in the turbulence settings let's make it um, make its swirl size also like 2.5 maybe yeah and um, I think we are good yeah Okay, also um, in the pyro, no, in the, in the pyro node, 
we want this division size to be like 0.05 or 3 uh, but that's that's when we are good with the overall shape um, let's add a bit more a bit more turbulence I think gas turbulence and here I would like to only just make the grain like all nine so it's like swirling now you can see much details and that's because our um, this division size is really large and we need to like yeah use 0 0.05 or 0 0.03 maybe let's yeah let's stick to 0 0.05 and uh, yeah let's check how it looks as you can see we have much more detail and we really see this uh, the smoke swirling and interacting between two emitters right here so that's basically all about our uh, pyro sim let's go back one level and uh, let's go to the pyro import and here i want just uh, cache it so drop node uh, drop a file cache node and uh, set the file mode to write files and pick your uh, destination for the cache files. So my path is just drive D, Houdini cache, particle advection cache, tutorial advection cache, and this part is, is crucial. You need to like uh, type uh, point dollar sign F point BGO point SC. So also we don't need um, we don't need this much uh, frames, so pick delete channels on end frame input and let's say we need to cache only like 80 frames. So hit save to disk, cool. So we have our cache, let's uh, check load from disk, so we are loading, not writing and hit play okay cool let's drop an L and let's name it Parocache. nope out Pyro cache. Cool. So now let's get back and uh, let's set up our particles. So we don't need pyro seem to be visible anymore. Let's drop a new geo and let's call it particles. Here let's drop a pop nut. and dive into it so here we want to select um, use parameter values and in the sub input we need to select our merge node so we have our actual emitters so let's go to the emitter and select our merge cool we have our emitters Yep, and particles are working. So now let's drop a, a direct by volumes and select select our volume. And we will be selecting our pyro import. And here let's select our out pyro cache. Cool. Now let's select a direction type to be update position 
So we see that it's working, but we see that majority of the particles um, just fly away as soon as they hit the border. So we are advecting, but we are not actually using any collisions for our particles. So to solve that, we need a static object. Basically the same thing that we used in um, Pyro Solver. So static object should be, we should select collisions, a mode to volume sample, division method to by size, and proxy volume should be our collision out collision and also don't forget to check the inward sign box now let's drop a merge let's place it after the pop solver and feed in the static object and important part is that our um, static object should be the first input and our pop solver should be the second input so the static object input is on the left side and pop solver is on the right otherwise it uh, wouldn't work so let's check yeah now the collisions are working perfectly okay cool now we can uh, feed in a bit more particles let's go to the burst and uh, here let's add okay let's say 50,000 Let's check. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. So we can, uh, or you can uh, add any forces you want, like, I don't know, pop drag, maybe. Yeah, let's just try pop drag. Let's just say we have really dense air. I don't see any improvements. So basically, yeah, it's up to you to use any uh, additional forces. But in this particular example, let's just, yeah, stick with what we have. So basically, that's it. Let's now render it out and I will I will show you some cool uh, features um, to create and control uh, shaders with different attributes so uh, the the first and I would say the easiest thing to do is we can go to our emitter and in between the circles and the merge node we can just create a color node and attach it to every color node so let's make one of them red and we can make another one oh sorry another one to be let's say blue so now our particles yeah will be obviously red and blue nothing like too interesting here okay uh let me just quickly copy my uh octane setup and uh, if you haven't watched my previous tutorial go and watch that because in the description uh, there's a link to the free octane um, hip file which I like Octane hip file, but yeah, the, the Octane preset for Houdini, so you don't need to set shop nets, rope nets, Octane networks and materials all the all the time. So yep, let me just copy that from another project. So I have copied my um, lights and the camera. Let's jump into it and check if everything's correct. I think this will work yep like this okay right now in our rope net let's just check that everything's correct uh, and also check the shop net okay all good let's start our IPR and yeah check what's what's going on 
So IPR camera node not found, check camera path in octane rope node. Okay, let's go to the rope. Oh, okay, actually we need the cam one. And let's reload our IPR. And uh, in the particles, we need to go to the octane tab and uh, open particles, render a sphere particles and pick by color alpha attributes and also change the radius global scale to something point 0 0.1 so let's hit reload and we have our particles in really beautiful pink color indicating that we don't have any material assigned so let's fix that let's go into the shop uh, network and let's uh, also create a material materials are created by uh, adding octane network let's call it particle material let's go inside um, let's just drop a glossy material and also just to show you how we can um, yeah just grab our cd uh, color attribute from our particles and use that in octane um, I will, i've already talked about that in the previous tutorial so it will be like the last time <laughs> i'm um, showing that um, yeah so we need texture texture image rgb let's wear it into the diffuse channel and uh, in the file name, we need to grab our RGB4K. So the RGB4K is the special texture that's located in your Houdini um, plugin, the Octane plugin for Houdini, obviously. And uh, it basically allows you to grab your uh, vector data uh, from the from the attribute you specify. In my case, is it's um, CD color. Okay, let's go back. Uh, let's check the particles and let's assign the material. Open the render tab and in the material, let's select our particle material. So here it is. You see that some particles are red and some of them are blue. Actually, my lighting is kind of off. So let me just yeah, maybe this this is a bit better. Okay, um, now I think okay, it, it might be looking cool at some point where they are starting to like diffuse, but that's that's not the effect I'm really into and looking for. I'll just move the camera a bit up. Okay. So what I want to do and uh, what I've already done uh, when I was discovering this uh, technique. So I want to actually get the attribute from our PyroSim and use that when shading um, the particles. So let's go to the particles and let's drop a file. No, not the file. Let's drop the object merge. And let's select uh, here in the object one, let's select our pyro sim. So pyro import, pyro out, pyro cache. Okay, now if we press the middle mouse button, we see that we have density field, velocity fields, temperatures, uh, heat, fuel, and all that stuff. Now let's drop a uh, attribute, attribute from volume. And what what this node does? It basically converts the field to attribute. And let's wire down uh, the volume to the right input 
and the popnet to the left input. And let's change the attribute name to, let's say, temperature. You can experiment with this, you can try using velocity or, I don't know, density, temperature. There are like different options. So attribute size, we just need one and it's float and we are good to go. So now let's go back, select our particles, go to octane, go to particles and alpha attribute will be our temperature. Cool. So now let's go to the shop net and open our particle material. And here let's select uh, this and delete. We will be creating custom material. So let's first of all drop material mixer and uh, let's drop a float, no, texture texture grayscale. So if you are working with float attributes, you must uh, use uh, float image texture and uh, here in the file name you must select alpha 4k map. So now we can clamp or actually yeah I don't think that we need clamp on this stage but yeah let's let's leave it just Okay, and now let's wire to the material and uh, create two materials which we will be like mixing. So first we need a glossy material which will be black. Let's wire to the material one. And next one will be material diffuse. And let's wire it into the material two. So let's quickly reload this. And you can see that some parts are actually diffuse and some of them are glossy. Maybe we don't need this clamp. Yeah, I think we should go to the geometry spreadsheet, select our particles and check the values of the temperature attribute. So it's kind of from uh, 8.6 to 0 0.03 so we can clamp our map to be minimum should be 0 and maximum should be let's say 8 okay now uh, let's keep our IPR and I want these particles to be smoothly transition because if you look right now um, you will see that it's pretty harsh um, transition so let's fix that we will need a gradient and let's make that gradient kind of something like this this color and um, and black. Let's try. I think with this we should go with constant. No. Okay. Let's let's keep this. Maybe if we go constant and then. Okay, nothing changed. Yeah, basically what we will be doing, we will be feeding this float image into our uh, gradient, into our input, and now wire this to the diffuse. So, yeah, we will have this smooth gradient so they will, will they will become white not like spawn already white so you, you can see it here so it's kind of growing all right um, maybe 
Yeah, let's use diffuse material. Yeah, let's reset the view. And basically, we are good. So you can see how they they really become Yeah. That's cool. I think that's pretty cool. We can uh, also change this to be, let's say, red or aqua blue or, I don't know, something like this is also cool. But yeah, that's up to you and feel free to be creative here. So yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it. Now we can, uh, we can maybe use some depth of field. Let's go to our camera. Let's say f-stop should be 3.2. And maybe we can pick a focus. And uh, also we can tweak our lights and yeah, tweak many, many different things like to your liking. But uh, yeah, when you are, when you feel that you are good to go, you just go to your ROP render, um, go to your output, and actually we can we can set one thing that I've used in the in the example. So here in your particles, um, you can drop a time shift node and you can get really sexy slow motion effects so time shift oh no not the time shift but time time blend is the correct one and here let's select it and evaluation mode let's say we need by speed and point two yeah now it works okay that's cool and now you can render not only like 80 frames, but let's say 200 frames. So... Yeah, and in After Effects, when you will be like color correcting this, you can just use Time Warp effect and you will be just increasing the speed, not slowing down, which can cause artifacts and all that stuff. So yeah. That's that's it guys and we just go to the rock render output um, image file path so yeah just select your output path and uh, don't forget to if you are rendering it in a sequence you must let's say file name is render and write down something like this dollar sign f so if you if you will not write it down uh, the renderer will just overwrite every frame and you will not, not get your like animation so yeah specify your frame range and uh, hit render to disk so that's that's all about this topic and uh, it was the last part of uh, series about particles in Houdini at least for this moment um, yeah so I really hope that now uh, Houdini is not scary especially the particles because I was like uh, declining all the all the stuff that contained particles um, but yeah as you can see it's it's not that hard to set up the simulation and uh, there are tons of different variations and uh, parameters that you can tweak to achieve really cool results that's all guys thanks a lot for watching i really hope that you learned something new today and if you enjoyed this tutorial please leave a like and subscribe to my channel more to come bye